Well, I mean, it, they've got a plan, so that's, <laughs> you know, that's always sort of a laugh. But, I mean, it, from our point of view, look, we, 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 we had a plan for this anyway. We knew it might happen uh, a long time ago. It was threatened, if you like, and it's um, and now going to become a reality. So it won't impact on us more than, you know, it's, we're not reacting to this. We'll, we're obviously proacting, but uh, it's not ideal, to say the least. And whether or not I agree with it personally is obviously irrelevant, but... Um, it's, it's, it's not great, if I'm honest. And, of course, in this division, we'll be impacted where others will not due to the size of the supporter base in the stadium. Um, but as we always have done, you know, and I'm fairly proud of that since day one of the pandemic, we've dealt with everything that's been thrown at us with the utmost professionalism and we'll continue to do that. So, basics then. If I am a Bradford City season ticket holder or I'm a Bradford City fan who would mm -hmm. like to buy a ticket and come and watch you for the next home game probably not this the, the one against Sutton this weekend because the rules yeah. don't come in until next week but beyond that yes. what what will that mean for me as a fan if I want to come to Valley Parade well from our perspective I mean it's obviously we will be meeting tomorrow and then we'll make a statement in due course about what it means for us in, in detail uh, on the face of it from what I can understand obviously you will need um, either proof that you've had the jabs at least two um, or you will get you'll be able to do access the ground with a lateral flow negative test obviously um, and and you know we've got to make as much effort as we can to ensure that is simple for people. We certainly don't want to put people off coming here. We believe we've got a very safe environment. Uh, there are far more dangerous environments than a football stadium like this. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll take every step. Does it mean more manpower required from yeah. the club's point of view? More people uh, the on cost, the gates the checking things? And yeah, the costs go up. You know, and obviously the decision has been taken from government tonight and. Um, there were some very interesting words coming out of the Prime Minister's mouth about, you know, why they've done this, and it's definitely got nothing to do with uh, changing the narrative about Christmas parties and their own mess. Um, this, uh, you know, th 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 there seems to be a real, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice move, you know, for, it could be argued by some, um, but, you know, the Prime Minister argues that, you know, it's better to make the move now than delay it because of what may come. The problem that most people will have with that is that the data that they showed um, doesn't really stack up against what the decision they've made. Um, cases and hospital, sorry, hospitalisations are decreasing from November to now, but we've now got, you know, a soft lockdown, so to speak. Politics aside, and as I say, what you or I think is is entirely irrelevant. No, but, yeah. It's you know the fact of the matter is that this is this is what's happening, and people you know, Correct, yeah. far more you know wisdom on these matters can debate that till Correct. the cows come home. But it's what it's what the government decides. Financially, as you say, there mm -hmm. the, there will be a knock-on effect. Yeah. How much of a concern is that? Well, it's it's never you you know you don't get excited about throwing money away, so to speak. But we won't be throwing it away, in my view, because obviously we're trying to make it safe and accessible for people. What we will do is we will assess the setup we already have in terms of stewarding and personnel in and around the ground and and you also have to appreciate that when the pandemic happened the hospitality sector and the security sectors took a real hit and people went away and got other jobs and never came back so the, you know the the, uh, the people power if you like isn't there you can't pull on extra resource very easily and if you do it costs money um, but we will look at systems we can put in place and, and the thing that perhaps has been overlooked here is that there will be immense queues, potentially. Um, so that means potentially opening the ground earlier. That has knock-on effects on various levels from a cost perspective. And, and we need to make sure people can safely queue and socially distance. Um, so there, there are a number of things that it's very difficult for me to specify on, you know, in the cold light of, what, an hour since it yeah, got announced. Course. But, you know, this time tomorrow we'll have, we'll have made a statement and we'll, we'll assure people of, of where we're at. As you say, you, you kind of had this contingency plan in place the last time that this was looking yeah, like yeah. a possibility. And that's uh, been approved by local authorities in Bradford, so they're, they're aware of what our plans will be. Right. At, at that time, were there any conversations, for example, with the Football League as to whether they were in any position to financially chip in towards the cost of any, you know, any no. increased security or any increased stewarding that might be required? No, 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 I don't, I don't feel that, I don't sense that. I don't think they have to. Um, you know, um, I guess you know. You know, some clubs would say, "Is that a level playing field?" If, if, if for example, Bradford City have been um, played, paid money to to assist them in the operation of their business. Um, you know, I could obviously fire straight back with that and say, "Well, we've got the biggest supporter base, and it impacts us where it won't impact 
uh, other clubs with all due respect uh, in this division um, but look it, look Catherine for, with all this kind of stuff it's always been a case of just throw it out as we'll have to get on with it as you rightly say opinions aside um, it's a done deal so we have to deal with it and we've, we, we, we will do that so it's going to be a busy time. It's always a busy time for you guys anyway, but particularly yeah. now, you know, these things come in, you don't get an awful lot of notice. Uh, I guess your message to City fans who are travelling to the game tonight, who are listening on their radios, people who are at home thinking, I'd like to come to a game in the, in, you know, the knock-on effect for me. Just sum up for anybody well, I mean, listening look, who's concerned. Point, you know, trust us, we, we make this a safe environment. Obviously, we were, we were attempting to break our League 2 attendance record on Boxing Day against Harrogate. Um, as long as we follow the rules, we're certainly not going to change our narrative on that, um, from my point of view, until we're told to stop and shut the business down and, and go back behind closed doors. I think this creates a grey area. It will upset and lump a number of people. Um, but from our perspective, all I, all I can promise the Bradford City supporter is that we'll make every effort to make sure it's a comfortable evening and the, or, or day for you and you're not put into any position you don't want to be put into if you can help it. Um, I've already had a few texts, as you can imagine, saying, will the club be enforcing this? We don't have a choice. You know, we're not the government. Um, we, we, we will be enforcing it and we'll be working to the guidelines we've been given. Well, we appreciate that, Ryan, and we appreciate that you always do keep the channels of communication open between the club and the fans and the club and, and us as the media, so we do appreciate you giving us a bit of a, a very quick response to that, bearing in mind the announcement <laughs> was made less than an hour and a half ago. Um, so stay tuned, and just to reiterate, if you are just tuning in and thinking, well, what exactly has been said? They are going to be bringing in mandatory uh, va vaccine passports, but if you don't have one of those, then a negative lateral flow test will also be an acceptable thing to get you in if you want yes. to come and watch the football, watch this space. How are you feeling about this one tonight then, Ryan, before we let you go? Yeah, look, it's been a while since we've been at home. This is a big week for us. We've got two home games. We need to be at, at it tonight and Saturday and so on. Um, we, you know, we all know where we want to be and where we currently are are two different things uh, but it's a long old season there's a long way to go of course uh, this week we're buoyed by the arrival of um, a former member of staff of yours in I our know. back room how dare sorry. you <laughs> sorry not man. sorry sorry not sorry um, <laughs> but no you know so you know look it, it, we, we, the, the, the guys will be at it tonight um, we know what we need to do and it's nice to be back on home soil and I hope we've got a big crowd here on Saturday as well to welcome the guys in. But um, you know, we're going into a, a busy, busy, festive period. Um, I don't believe that any period breaks or makes a season, but it can certainly influence it. Um, and, and we see this is a big, a big week for us, there's no doubt.